special Judicial Watch update on Facebook Live. A lot going on this past week uh, at Judicial Watch. We're obviously continuing with our Clinton email investigations, but as you know, the Clinton-Obama email scandal isn't the only scandal Judicial Watch has been investigating. Just so you know, Judicial Watch is investigating everything, and we filed over 3,000 Freedom of Information Act requests and over 300 Freedom of Information Act lawsuits. And obviously, some of those were about Hillary Clinton's emails and still questions pending there, uh, but also about the IRS. And so we have big news on the IRS this week, uh, some immigration information to share with you on the rule of law and sanctuary policies in cities. That's another battle Judicial Watch has been fighting for years. And I'll talk a little bit about the issues with uh, Donald Trump and some of his advisors uh, that are in the news. I think I have some interesting insights for you to uh, hear uh, later. Uh, but first, the big news is that we have new documents from the IRS, and I think they just found them, or that's what I recall, and they reveal that, uh, again, top IRS officials uh, admitted that the Cincinnati office, which was the IRS office, remember, that was blamed for this Tea Party suppression, uh, was targeting groups based on, and this is the phrase, guilt by association. So we just got 1,500 new documents from the IRS, and we go through all these documents, and we saw that there were some notes taken uh, from a meeting, it looked like in the Office of Legal Counsel in the IRS, and the notes show that, um, I guess it's the Office of Chief Counsel is the legal name there, that uh, they met with um, uh, two key employees, Natalie Park and a former IRS employee, Sarah Hall Ingram, and, um, and Holly Paz, who was another official at the IRS, had concerns about the Cincinnati's office targeting. And these are handwritten notes. And this is what Holly wrote, or this is the notes related to Holly Paz, this top IRS official. Holly, since he paralyzed by letting any issue go unaddressed. They think they know what the org is really doing rather than looking at actual activities. Cues were not activity-based, but guilt by association questions, like cues asking party affiliations. They see approval as something that will turn out to be a very bad org, terrified of that. That's why they personally will need to have power to say yes. Agents felt if they could ask enough questions, they will find a problem. Boy, that sounds like fairness, huh? Agents were jumping to negative conclusions and assumptions, particularly when relationship, where relationship with political groups or affiliations. So this is from an, a top legal meeting at the IRS Washington headquarters in 2011. The scandal wasn't exposed for another two years. And yet the IRS knew the Cincinnati office was basically asking illegal questions, and they did nothing about it. In fact, Cincinnati later complained, we found in other documents, that they were waiting on Washington to act. And of course, Washington didn't want these groups active either. So if you want to know what the IRS scandal is about, you have to look at documents like these, and we've got tons and tons of them. And it further confirms that the IRS, as I said, knew about the abuses years ago. And it also shows that you know what, people are talking about draining the swamp and cleaning house. It's the name of our new book, as you know. Uh, but uh, it's not just about the Clinton email scandal. It's also about the IRS scandal. Because remember, the FBI pretended to look into the IRS scandal. Justice Department pretended to look into the IRS scandal uh, run under Obama, and they found nothing, supposedly. Well, we need to reopen that criminal investigation. That ought to be at the top of President Trump's uh, list when he's sworn into office. Uh, these documents, by the way, that show that the Cincinnati office was, uh, or the IRS was inappropriately targeting the Tea Party with uh, outrageous questions like party affiliation, and their policy was guilt by association. That's the Obama way. Wait, if you're going up through a government agency, you're being targeted by guilt by association? Really outrageous stuff out of the IRS. So it really puts in context all the noise we're hearing about what's going on here in Washington these days. I know people are excited about the transition. We have a crisis over at the Eternal Revenue Service. And remember what happened there. 
President Obama used the IRS and his Democratic allies used the IRS to suppress an entire political movement against him. And in my view, that's how he stole the 2012 election in plain sight. He didn't have to have fraudulent voters or whatever. He basically shut down as a political operation by abusing the police power of the IRS. And uh, there's got to be criminal accountability for what went on there. And uh, if this Justice Department under President Trump is to do anything, uh, this ought to be high on the list. I think you would agree. I know a lot of news this week about sanctuary policies. Sanctuary policies are policies by local states, by states, localities, uh, and cities where they either provide benefits to illegal immigrants, often in violation of law, and uh, or they essentially uh, get in the way of the national law related to federal immigration, related to uh, illegal immigration, and they let illegal alien criminals out onto the streets because they're providing sanctuary for them because they don't think anyone should be deported. And so as a result, you get people like Kate Steinle in San Francisco getting murdered and tens of thousands of illegal alien criminals being let loose on the streets to victimize others, uh, kill, maim, murder, rape, you name it. Uh, all, on the, all on the altar of this uh, open borders ideology uh, run by leftists in big cities across America. So the news this week was the L.A. chief said he's not going to help the administration deport anyone, assuming the Trump administration here, and that uh, Rahm Emanuel reasserted the fact that says Chicago is a sanctuary city. Now, Judicial Watch has been um, pursuing the sanctuary city issue for some time. We've sued Los Angeles. We've sued uh, and threatened lawsuits here in Virginia. Uh, we've threatened lawsuits elsewhere and have policies changed. We have a pending lawsuit against the city of San Francisco on behalf of the uh, uh, California taxpayer, uh, Cynthia Soletti. And that case is scheduled to go to trial in February of 2017 because, as you know, San Francisco has an outrageous sanctuary policy. So not only are the policies often against the law, uh, but they are dangerous, and uh, they encourage more illegal immigration. And it's one thing to put a wall at the border, but if there are welcome signs in every major city in the government, in, this, in the country, there's no wall high enough to keep illegal aliens out. Uh, so uh, the federal government has got to start highlighting the fact that these cities are not complying with federal law and thwarting federal law, and uh, if they are, uh, the, the hammer needs to come down against them. And, if it, and it often means simply just keeping taxpayer funds away from them, which usually is enough because politicians uh, uh, thrive on taxpayer, uh, on taxpayer money and usually principles get pushed aside even if they're uh, far leftists or uh, open border types. You take their money away, they uh, start squealing like pigs and, do, and start following the rules. And that's something that needs to be done in addition to some basic uh, rule of law enforcement. Uh, so this is, um, this is an opportunity for the, uh, 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 the Trump administration because if they start enforcing the rule of law against sanctuary policies, illegal aliens in those cities may not want to stay in those cities. And uh, you have to have this respect for the rule of law at all le levels of government, and that would do as much as any wall to encourage illegal aliens to return home and prevent uh, illegal aliens from crossing the border to begin with. Uh, so it's something that's very serious and the Judicial Watch has many, many lawsuits, innovative lawsuits and investigations. I tell you, when these cities are saying they're going to stand to thwart the rule of law again under a Trump administration, I don't know what President Trump is going to do, what the Justice Department is going to do, but you can, I can bet you that if we can figure out a way to sue them again, or to sue them at all, uh, we will to try to enforce the rule of law. So uh, stick with us on that, and we'll keep you apprised as uh, things move along. Uh, it's important to note, though, uh, that the border and national security are in inextricably linked. The terrorists have access to the border just the way an, a, a poor uh, illegal alien from Mexico, Honduras, or Guatemala do. Uh, let's not pretend that the terrorists are stupid and are ignoring the... Uh, <laughs> Uh, the open door at our southern border. We've exposed that repeatedly. I was on Fox Business that yesterday talking about this very issue. Judicial Watch has had Pulitzer Prize worthy reporting highlighting the crisis caused by having ISIS, uh, having easy access to our border, 
Uh, we know that there, are, there is a significant training going on down there in Mexico. Uh, the cartels bring the terrorists across the border. And I tell you, given the crisis we're facing with the national security issue on the border and the terrorist threat there, I don't know if we can wait for a wall. So uh, it's something that you need to keep apprised on, uh, apprised of, because uh, you know I fear there's going to be calamity unless we get a handle on this. And I know Mr. Trump is against illegal immigration, uh, but the siren song of the establishment is going to be to move on, and to oh you know let's only uh, let's just throw out the real criminals. Well, I got news for you. You know the border needs to be secure, and anyone who's here illegally. Uh, it makes it, I can't imagine you can have a sane immigration policy that allows some lawbreakers to get away with it and others to be punished. Uh, so uh, that's my view on it, and I, and I hope uh, uh, those who work in the Trump administration actually start enforcing the rule of law, which would be the greatest immigration reform at all, ever, which is actually start following the rules already on the books. We don't need to change them. We just need to start enforcing them. Uh, you know, a lot of news this week about the Trump transition. Uh, it's good to be judicial watch in a sense. We don't uh, ter get terribly involved in, you know, who should be where or, where or, or, uh, or, or uh, you know, who should be recommended and things like that. Obviously, if someone terrible is put forward, uh, we stand, uh, we're not, a we will oppose them and highlight the problems. Uh, you know, there have been issues, for instance, about, um, one of Trump's national security advisors who was purged, and, uh, and this was, I think, uh, was it Mr. R now his name is escaping me. Is it Rogers? Rogers, yeah. yeah. Uh, JB reminds me of my colleague. So former Congressman Rogers, uh, he was terrible in Benghazi when he was over in Congress, and he was uh, had all sorts of conflicts of interest, and uh, just uh, the epitome and a product, and he, I'm sure he's a good guy otherwise, but it's just a product of the Washington way of doing things. And, you know, he's not the sort of person you would want in, a, in an administration that pretends to be reformist or purports to be reformist. So he was, quote, purged uh, because of his, uh, his failure to do the right thing on Benghazi. So uh, that wasn't necessarily a bad thing. But also, uh, you know, Stephen Bannon, who is a Trump advisor, formerly of Breitbart, uh, great guy. Now, you may not know this, but Judicial Watch and Bannon go a ways back. We worked with him on a film, and Bannon directed a film about Judicial Watch's activities, and specifically corruption during the first part of the Obama administration. And it's a great film. It's called District of Corruption. If you haven't uh, seen it, you should. It's available on Amazon. You can find it on our website as well. And so we work with Bannon quite a bit, as you might imagine, in getting this film put together. And Bannon is being smeared by the left, and establishment Republicans, without basis, as being all sorts of terrible things. I found them to be a hard-charging, principled, reformist, didn't have a racist bone in his body. I never heard him speak ill of anyone based on race, sex, religion, anything like that. And so he's being smeared maliciously and viciously and without foundation and, uh, you know, for what it's worth, he doesn't deserve it. And uh, if you disagree with him on policy, that's one thing. But as typical of the left, they have to destroy you, uh, and they have to suggest you're a bad person as opposed to that they just disagree with you. And so uh, I'd like to see more defenders of Bannon out there uh, who, uh, because this is just, uh, it's really terrible uh, to see this, this man who we know to be a good man uh, being slimed this way, and uh, uh, and if you want to know the way Bannon thinks, you should look at this film too. So it's an interesting uh, perspective as to what you might expect from a Trump administration. But you can see why Bannon and Judicial Watch were uh, good together because he understood uh, the crisis and the corruption Washington faced. And I and I hope that Steve, uh, uh, his his good sense on this uh, remains with him uh, despite the attacks he's getting. Uh, but uh, you know, as I said about with the Trump White House and the Trump administration, we'll be there to uh, sue them when they do bad. Uh, we'll provide support for them if they want to follow the rule of law, but if there's anything illegal or secretive in violation of the law, Judicial Watch is, is going to blow the whistle on it. Uh, but uh, uh, we've got to make sure the rule of law is upheld 
And if this administration isn't willing to do the right thing or doesn't want to police itself even, we'll do it. And uh, so uh, uh, there's a lot to be done. A lot more Clinton email material coming up. We've got a hearing later this month. Uh, we're not slowing down. I know there's arguments over whether she should be prosecuted, pardoned or not. Get that out of your head in the sense that uh, Judicial Watch is going to keep on investigating and keep on getting the information. And I think the rule of law will follow. Uh, so I think it's uh, 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 trust us to get to the bottom of it and to take the leadership role here, even as the Trump administration seems confused politically about what they want to do with uh, uh, the criminal gang that it was Hillary Clinton, uh, President Obama, and her colleagues at the State Department and her uh, allies at the Foundation and all the other Clinton cash fronts. So we're, we're hard charging, keeping working, uh, immigration, major IRS scandal stuff that needs to be pursued, and uh, a great film with Stephen Bannon, whose name is in the news now. Uh, but it's a great film not only because uh, it tells you a little bit about Bannon, but it also uh, details Judicial Watch's great work, and it's one of the best documentaries you'll see on a lot of the scandals that deserve more coverage. And frankly, uh, the Fast and Furious scandal, it's worth the purchase price alone just to watch the Fast and Furious section because it's the best documentary I've seen uh, that addresses Fast and Furious and, and uh, uh, that's out there. And uh, again, another scandal that President Trump needs to investigate as well. But that's another video, another Facebook Live meeting. And uh, But we'll be back next week, so thanks for joining us and have a good week.